where you are, just open up your mouth and just begin to give God glory. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. And we love you. Come on, put your hands together. Song says, I'm a soldier and I'm on the battlefield and I'm fighting for the Lord. How many of you are soldiers? Come on, if you're on the battlefield for the Lord, just put your hands together. Y'all gotta help us sing this churchy song, okay? Clap your hands. I'm a soldier on the battlefield and I'm fighting, yes I am. Fighting for the Lord. I promised him I would serve him till I die and I'm fighting, yes I am. Fighting for the Lord. On this Christian journey, I have heartaches and pain, sunshine and rain and I'm fighting. Fighting for the Lord. If I hold I'm a soldier, and I'm on the battlefield, and I'm fighting, yes I am. Fighting for the Lord. I've been up and I've been down, and we'll turn around, and I'm fighting, yes I am. Fighting for the Lord. On this Christian journey, I've had heartaches and pain, sunshine and rain, but I'm fighting. Fighting for the Lord. If I hold Somebody say, I, I come too far to give up now. Yeah. I gotta keep on fighting. The Bible said the race is not given to the swift, nor to the strong, but to the one that endures till the end. Y'all like that? Y'all yeah. like that? Yeah. Come on, help me say, say I'm on the battlefield. I'm on the battlefield. I'm on the battlefield. I'm on the battlefield, fighting for the Lord. Say I'm on. I'm on the battlefield, fighting for the Lord. I'm on. I'm on the battlefield, fighting for the Lord. I'm on. I'm on the battlefield, fighting for the Lord. Say I'm on. I'm on the battlefield, fighting for the Lord. I'm on the battlefield. I'm on the battlefield, fighting for the Lord. I'm on the battlefield. I'm on the battlefield. Just say I'm on the battlefield. I'm on.
Come on, if that's you, put your hands together like that. One more time. I promise him. Serve until I die. God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Our Father and our God, how we bless your name. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord God, for these who have joined us in live stream worship. Now, God, I pray now that you speak to us through your word. Lord, that we will be changed. Lord God, we will be uplifted and inspired. Remove all distractions and we give you the glory and give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. How many can testify that you on the battlefield? Hallelujah. Come on, how many, how many can testify I'm on the battlefield and I'm fighting? Hallelujah. 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 I like I, 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 I like the way the praise thing did that. Hallelujah. I like that. I like that. I'm on the battlefield. Amen. That's 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 the new version. But it's first Sunday. And if, if we was back in church, some of my older members would be here. My mothers of the church. And they would remind me. We don't know that way. But we know this way. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Lord, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Put your hands together right there. Oh, I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield <laughs> for my Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Help me say it again. Oh, I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Lord, I promised him that I, what you gonna do? I'm gonna serve him till I die. Lord, For my Lord, Lord, I'm on the battlefield. Yeah, for my Lord. <laughs> yeah, Lord, I promised Him that I stay right there. I promised Him that I. Anybody made a promise to Him? Promised Him that I. Gets hard sometimes, but. 
but I promised him that I, I get talked about, but I promised him that I, I promised, I promised him that I, that I will serve him till I die. Luke 1, verse 39 says, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Amen. Today I want to talk from this subject. I want to talk to you today about the blessed visitation. The blessed visitation. Say that with me. The blessed visitation. As we look upon our scripture today, my brothers and my sisters here, Dr. Luke writes to us about how there is a meeting and a visitation of two mothers. One by the name of Elizabeth and the other by the name of Mary. I want to suggest to you, if you don't know it, that Mary and Elizabeth are cousins. And as they are coming together to meet, want you to know that these two mothers are pregnant. Elizabeth is pregnant with John, who we know as John the Baptist, and Mary is pregnant with Jesus. I want to tell you today that when you have these two meetings of these mothers coming together, you will also see that there is a meeting of expecting and unexpected in the same room. The reason why I say there's a meeting of expecting and unexpected in the same room because, yes, both mothers are expecting. The reason why I say they're expecting because now Elizabeth is about six months in her pregnancy. Mary has just received word that she is with child. But now here it is. They are both expecting, but it's also unexpected. Why do you say it's unexpected, Pastor Wimbley? Because Elizabeth at the time of her pregnancy is an old age. She has passed what we call childbearing years. But yet she is pregnant even at an old age. And Mary is a virgin, but yet she is pregnant. 
want you to understand, my brothers and my sisters, that even when Mary is pregnant, she does not understand because she has, she has to ask herself the question, how is it that I'm pregnant but I'm a virgin? How is it that I'm pregnant without the help of a man? And I want you to understand, my brothers and my sisters, that you will discover that even when Mary begins to wonder about her pregnancy, she began to ask some questions. Matter of fact, when you read the verses 35 through 37, you will discover, and it says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Verse 36 says, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. But that's what I like this right here. Verse 37 says this, For with God nothing shall be impossible. When you read these verses, this is a response because Mary asks the question, How can I be pregnant when I am a virgin? How can I be pregnant without the help? Of a man, and the Bible lets her know, the angel lets her know because the Holy Spirit has come upon you. But what I like about it is verse 37, which caught my attention. It says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. There's another translation that says that God's word shall not come back void, that whatever God said, He's able to perform it. Hope you haven't tuned me out yet, but this is what I come to tell you. Here it is Mary is pregnant, even though she's a virgin. And here it is, Elizabeth has a child now, or she is pregnant with child, and she's up in age. Which lets me know, my brothers and my sisters, both of them have the testimony of letting you know that whatever God wants to do, he can do it. That's a word for somebody right there, because I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what people have said. I don't care even what people may put in your ear and in your mind. I come to tell you that when God wants wants to do something to you and get a blessing to you and do something through you, he's able to do it. A shout goes right there because some of you have been battling with some things in your mind, in your spirit all year long. But I come to remind you that with God, all things are possible. I wish I had a few witnesses that can just put your hands together in here and out there that's watching and knowing that with God, all things are possible. It does not matter, does not matter what it looks like, does not matter what people say, because I come to give you good news. When God gets ready to bless you, he don't have to check with anybody. When God gets ready to bless you, he don't have to run it by anybody. But when God gets ready to bless you, God does what he want to do, when he want to do it, how he want to do it. And can't nobody do nothing about it. Somebody ought to give God praise. Somebody ought to give God glory. Somebody ought to give God a shout right now. And knowing that God is able. Oh yeah, my brothers and my sisters, here it is. We have in the same room of this visitation that we will understand that you will see where you have expecting and unexpected coming in the same room but my brothers and my sisters once we have read this we discover that once Mary has gotten the word the Bible says that without any hesitation that she gets up and makes her way to go visit her cousin Elizabeth Oh yeah, the Bible says that once Mary got this word that she is pregnant, once the angel has departed this word into her, she now goes to find her cousin Elizabeth. Please, please take note of that, that she goes to connect with her cousin. Why does she go connect with her cousin? I think that's a good thing right there because here it is, both of them have what we call miracles that have taken place in their life. Here it is, Mary is pregnant being a virgin and also Elizabeth is pregnant at an old age but yet she goes connect with her cousin here it is because both of them got one thing in common the Lord has done something miraculous in both of their lives let me park on the curve here for a preaching moment to let everybody know you got to get to a point in your life that you connect with people watch this that got the power and the favor of God moving on their life in other words you got to surround yourself with people 
people who know that God is doing something in their life. Notice something. It's not just any cousin, uh, but this is a cousin uh, that has seen the work of God in her life. Let me just talk to you for a second. You got to connect with some people. You got to be around some people. Watch this. Uh, who has the work and favor of God uh, working in their life, but also they realize that it's nobody but God that gave it to them. Uh, Y'all missed the shout right there. There are some people who are blessed. There are some people who are have it going on, but yet they don't ever give God the credit and give God the recognition of where their blessing comes from. Lord, deliver me from people who are arrogant, who are self-centered, who think that they made it on their own. I don't want to be around those people, but I want to be around the people that the blessing of God is on their life, but yet they're not ashamed to open up their mouth and let everybody know that it was nobody but the Lord. I think I may preach for a little while everything I got God gave me who I am he made me what I know he taught me where I am the Lord brought me I don't know about you but give me some people give me some family members give me some friends that know how to open their mouth and give God all the praise give God all the credit and give God all the glory she makes her way to connect with her cousin she goes connect with her cousin. John, the Bible says that when she goes connect with her cousin, the Bible says that when she enters the house of Elizabeth, watch this, after the greeting, the greeting, watch this, when she walks in the house, the Bible says that John, who is in the womb of Elizabeth, leaps <laughs> in her womb. Wow. Not only that, does the baby leap, but then the Bible says that Elizabeth began to be full of joy and she is excited about what's about to take place. I want you to know, my brothers and my sisters, that when we see this this morning, that I call this the blessed visitation. Why you say it's a blessed visitation? It's a blessed visitation. One, because I'm a firm believer that Mary is blessed from this visitation. Why, 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 why do you say that Mary is blessed from this visitation? Because the Bible says that when Mary gets there, look what Elizabeth tells her. Elizabeth lets her know in so many words, Elizabeth began to talk to her cousin and says, you know what? I got something to tell you. You are pregnant, but understand you have something great on the inside of you. You have somebody great on the inside of you that's going to change the world. I believe, I believe, I believe that, that, that Mary is blessed by these words of Elizabeth because I just believe in my mind that Elizabeth gave encouragement to Mary. Even though Mary did not understand some things, I hear Elizabeth saying, Now, I understand, Mary, that you're pregnant and a virgin, and there are going to be some people who may look down on you. There may be some people who may not understand. And I hear Elizabeth saying, Because Mary, I've been in the same boat. Because understand, because a woman who could not bear children was looked upon as shameful or looked upon with disgrace or with disrespect because they could not bear children. And can't you see it, Mary? All of these years, people have talked about me. People look down on me. But I come to tell you, when God steps in, when God steps in, he's able to turn things around. I hear saying, so I come to tell you, regardless of what people say, know who is on the inside of you. Understand, regardless of what people may think, please know that God has placed something and someone in your life to change the world. In other words, you have a purpose, y'all missed the shout. Let me give it to you right here. In other words, I believe Elizabeth encouraged Mary by letting her know, even though some people may not understand what's on the inside of you, long as you know. Know what God is doing in your life. You serve a purpose. I don't know who I'm talking to, but let me let help you out. There's some of us, people will look down on you. People will talk about you. But when you know who you are, who you are, and purpose in your life, it really does not matter what people think or what they say. I believe Mary, Mary was blessed by this visitation because the Bible says in these next verses, you will discover that Mary begins to rejoice 
and be excited with this visitation. But not only was Mary blessed by the visitation, I also believe, watch this, that Elizabeth was blessed. Matter of fact, Elizabeth talks about how she's blessed by this visitation because the Bible says that uh, when, 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 when Mary entered, watch the words of what Elizabeth says. She spake out with a loud voice and says, Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. And watch this now. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? In other words, she's excited, y'all. But she says this with humility. In other words, to say that my Lord has come to visit me. That is so amazing to me. First of all, because Jesus hadn't even been born. Jesus hadn't even been born. But look at the word she says. She says, my Lord comes to visit me. I wondered, I wondered, I said, well, how does she know about Jesus? That's a lot about the Messiah. But you got to go back to verse 41. It says this right here. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. <gasps> Y'all missed the shout. I just want to tell you that when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, the Lord will show you some things uh, that other folk may not see. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, the Lord will open your eyes uh, and other folk can't see what you you see, I need somebody out here. I need somebody in here that can give God praise and knowing that the Holy Spirit will reveal some things to you. She says it with humility. You know what she says? She says, my Lord, hadn't been born yet, but my Lord comes to visit me. Woo. She's blessed by the visitation. She's excited about it. She hadn't even been born. But she still opens her mouth to say, he comes to visit me. Let me tell you why you ought to be excited. Let me tell you why all of us ought to be excited. Because the same testimony or the same statement that she says, in other words, it's with humility because she says, I'm not even deserving or worthy for him, the Lord, to come pay a visit to me. I see you sitting there. I see what you, 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 you're not excited. Let me say it again. Elizabeth says so many words, I'm not even worthy for my Lord to come pay a visit to me. Oh, let me break it down for you. I know a lot of us walk around here and we act like that uh, the Lord owes us something. That the Lord owe us this thing. But let me give you something to shout about. You ought to have that same attitude like Elizabeth had. You ought to have that same spirit like Elizabeth had to say, you know what? You know what? I am humbled. But yet I'm also thankful that the Lord came to visit me. I know some of y'all saying, well, when did he come visit me? This morning when he woke you up. This morning when he put food on your table, when he washed over you last night, I wish I had about three witnesses that can testify. I know the Lord came to see me. I know the Lord visited me. And if you don't have anything to shout about, you ought to give God glory that he, that he put another deposit in your account. Another deposit of mercy. Another deposit of grace. Another deposit of love. Somebody lift your hand. Give God glory. Give God praise and say, he came to visit me. She, 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 she's excited that my Lord hadn't even been born yet comes to visit me. Yes, Mary is blessed by the visitation. <laughs> Elizabeth is blessed by the visitation. And I just believe and I know that John, who is in the womb of Elizabeth, is blessed by the visitation. Oh, you can learn something from John. If you take a look at it real quick, you, 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 you can learn something from John. What can I learn? Because the Bible says, watch this, that when Mary entered the room, that John, Inside the womb of Elizabeth leaped. Ah, you're not getting it. In other words, he leaped when Mary 
entered the room being pregnant with Jesus. Hmm. Let me ask you a question. Mary, I told you, is blessed. Yeah. Blessed is the fruit of her womb. When she walks in, John in the womb of Elizabeth leaps. Mary is blessed because of the fruit of her womb she's carrying Jesus. John in the womb of Elizabeth jumps, is excited. Just let me ask you a question. When was the last time somebody jumped for your blessing? When was the last time somebody leaped because of your blessing? Y'all not happy. See, a whole lot of us, when we see other folk blessed, we just sit there and we don't get excited. But you got to learn how to leap, learn how to jump, learn how to get excited, even when other folk are being blessed. Woo! Now like that. But I hear John also saying that he leaped and got excited. Here it is, y'all, because purpose and prophecy has entered the room. Whew. What you mean purpose and prophecy? Will you, will you go with me? Because when you look at Luke 1, look at verse 15. When it talks about John, it says, For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be, shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit. Watch this. Go before him in the spirit and the power of his lasers. Watch this. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Here it is. Don't miss this. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. You missed it. In other words, John, we know, is the forerunner for Christ. Going before him to prepare the way. What are you trying to say? I come to tell you, you ought to get excited when you know purpose has entered the room. Because in so many words, it works like this. John's purpose is to prepare the way. Woo, y'all missed it. See, that's why a lot of y'all ought to be excited. That's why a lot of y'all ought to be giving God praise and giving God glory. Why? Because it's only when you know purpose in your life. Now, for those who don't understand purpose and those who don't have a purpose, I understand why they can sit and be mean and, 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 and don't be excited. But when you know who you are and when you know whose you are and when you know you got purpose in your life, I may not have a lot of money, but I got purpose. I may not I have a lot of friends, but I got purpose. Uh, maybe a lot of people that don't like me, but I got purpose. I wish I had a few witnesses in here that know that God has a purpose for your life. It says purpose has entered the room. But then I also hear him saying, you know what? That John Lee also because Jesus has entered the room. Y'all missed it. Nothing deep, plain and simple. The presence of the Lord has entered the room. Let me try it one more time. The presence of the Lord has entered the room. And what I'm trying to tell you is that wherever the presence of the Lord is, there will be joy wherever the presence of the Lord is there will be joy there will be excitement there will be praise when you know that the presence of the Lord is in the building and I hear John would tell you that wherever Jesus is he brings blessings with him 
Did you hear what I said? Wherever Jesus is, he brings blessings with him. A lot of y'all ought to have that same attitude like John had in the womb. That when you understand the presence of the Lord, and when you understand who Jesus is, you ought to have some type of excitement. You ought to have some type of movement. Not for a car. Not about a house. Not about money. But the mere fact that I know who the Lord is. Is there anybody besides me that can testify? I know who he is. Come on, anybody can testify. I know who he is. You know what? John lives out what the Bible says in 1 Peter. 1 Peter 4. When you read 1 Peter 4 and 8, it says, Whom having not seen ye love, and whom though now ye see him not, yet believe it, ye rejoice with joy and unspeakable and full of glory. Do you know what that says? Even though John had not seen Jesus physically, but he knew the presence of the Lord was in the room. And that's all I came to tell you this morning that when you know about the Lord and what he's able to do, you ought to have some type of movement and some type of excitement. Did you hear what I said? I want to let you know that when we see here that John, he leaped and he got excited y'all not happy John was still in the womb John had not even been born John was still in the womb but still got excited about Jesus can I talk to you for a second the Lord hadn't even done anything for him yet hadn't even opened doors for him yet hadn't even healed his body yet Hadn't even made his enemies leave him alone yet. But John still gets excited. I'm going to leave y'all right there. But this is my question. How is it that John can get excited and the Lord really ain't done nothing for him yet? How is it that John gets excited and he ain't even out no home? But those of us, you don't hear me, those of us, yes Lord, who not only been been born once, uh, but been born twice. Uh, we claim we've been born again. Uh, claim that we're saved. Uh, and the Lord uh, has been good to us. Uh, you don't hear me. Uh, how is it uh, that uh, John, uh, who hadn't even been born, uh, can give God glory uh, and get excited? Uh, but those of us, uh, he done healed our bodies. Uh, he done opened doors for us. Uh, he done made our him as a footstool. We act like we can't give him praise and we can't give him glory. But I dare you, Lord, I dare you, if you know that he made a way for you, if you know he's been good to you, why don't you be like John and get excited about the Lord? What I need to do, preacher, praise him. Did you hear me? Praise him. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I come to tell you, I'm just like John. I got joy. Anybody got joy? John, tell us why you got joy. I hear John saying, joy to the world. Savior has come. Is there anybody here got that same joy? You can testify this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away right where you are. In your home, in your living room, go ahead. Why don't you leap for Jesus? Jump for Jesus. Ah!
now. Yes, sir. Jump for Jesus. Why am I jumping? Because the Lord been good to me. 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 Yes. 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 Somebody here, somebody out there, and jump yet. But I just want to tell you, I need a few radical people that don't mind jumping for Jesus. Jumping for Jesus. Jumping for Jesus. I only need the blessed folk to jump for. If he blessed you, jump. If he blessed you once, jump one time. If he blessed you twice, jump two times. But if he keeps on blessing you, keeps on. Ah, 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 ah. Come on and jump on. Come on and jump on. Come on and jump on. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Praise him. Oh, yeah. Come on, get to Glory. Glory. Somebody said, you know, there's too much going on. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all uh, he's done for me, my soul, my soul, shouts hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Give him glory, hallelujah. 
My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, say it again. My hallelujah. My hallelujah say it with me out there. Father, our God, we give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for showing us lessons and things about the blessed visitation. Thank you, Lord God, for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. And we know, God, that wherever you are, there's liberty, there's peace, there's joy. And so, Lord God, we walk in the joy and the peace and the victory that's already been set for us. And now, Lord, I pray for that person today that's not saved and don't have a relationship with you, that they'll give their life to you today. I pray now, God, if they need a covering and a church home to connect with, if it's your will to be a part of this ministry, Lord, let them do so this day. Lord, we give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if that's you and you need to be saved, your life needs to be changed, I came to tell you, Jesus was born and he died that you may live. Did you hear me? And regardless of what you've done, regardless of where you've been, you can be saved today. He can change your life today. All you have to do is accept him, believe in him, confess your sins, and you want to make him and make him Lord and Savior of your life. He wants to be Lord and Savior of your life. He wants to be Lord over all. And all you have to do, yes, you, regardless of your past, regardless of mistakes that you made, you can be saved. Your life can be changed today. I know you're saying, well, I'm not in the church. You don't have to be in the building. You can be saved right where you are. And if that's you and you want to be saved, if you want to be saved, you want your life to change, I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I come before you just as I am. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I believe you died for me and you got up on the third day. Jesus, come into my life right now. Save me right now. I want you to be Lord and Savior of my life. And by faith, I know and believe that I'm saved. And I close my prayer with a thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, let us hear from you. Call our church email us put in the comment section let us know that you receive christ as your savior if you want to be a part of this ministry let us know call the church email us put in the comment section i want to connect with hunter hill whether salvation or whether church membership let us know because listen he wants a relationship with you and he wants you to be connected with a band of believers in the body of christ hallelujah let's give god praise you deserve give God praise. Let's give God glory. Amen. For the souls that were saved, lives that were changed, and people who connected. God bless you. Amen. It is now giving time. It is now giving time. It is now giving time. We're going to give back to God. Some of you have already done it already this earlier part of last week. 
and uh, and so some of you are done it, but this is our opportunity now to worship God through giving. And I want to praise God for those of you, amen, who've been faithful to God in your giving through this ministry. And even for our visitors, amen, who watch us by live stream and still give an offering to this ministry. It does not go unnoticed. And we praise God for you. Amen. Let me say also, if you don't have your elements, go ahead and get them now as we prepare for our communion on today. Your cracker, your bread, and juice as I lead you into our holy communion. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Also, let us not forget um, that we have four ways to give. Four ways we can give through our Hunter Hill members. You give the RAM. Also, that's GiveLify, text to give, and also you can mail in your tithes and your offering to the church. However you do it, let me pray for you. Our Father and our God, we thank you now for this opportunity to be able to give back a portion of what you've given to us. You've been so good to us. And Lord God, now we give our offerings back and our tithes back to you, Lord God. It all belongs to you. But Lord God, we're going to be obedient in what your word says. Now bless the gifts and the givers. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Listen, don't forget about our prayer call. Our prayer call every Thursday morning at 6 a.m. I want you to be on the prayer call. I want you to get your family members on the prayer call. Tell your friends to be on the prayer call. Co-workers, tell everybody, join me on this prayer call this Thursday at 6 a.m. Praise God for 94 who was on our prayer call this past Thursday. Amen. We give God praise for 94. Need six more to reach that 100 mark. Six more reach that 100 mark for our prayer call so that'll be on this thursday at 6 a.m take that same number for the prayer call and join in for our school of the word school of the word every sunday morning at 8 45 and thank god for those of you who've been faithful and participating in our school of the word amen amen listen if you are a high school student looking for ways to pay for college sign up for our virtual jc ward scholarship workshop this Saturday, this Saturday, December the 12th, from 12 to 2 o'clock p.m. Please, uh, I want you to know that this workshop is required for current Honey Hill members who are high school seniors or college students if you're planning to apply for the J.C. Ward Scholarship next year. So if you plan on applying for the J.C. Ward Scholarship next year, I want to let you know it's very important that you be a part of this virtual workshop. Registration information is available on RAM. Amen. And let's not forget about our... Uh, our E-Tree project, reminders, also all unwrapped gifts are due next Sunday, December the 13th. And you can bring your gifts to the church office Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. or on next Sunday. If you have not selected an ornament, you still have time. We have 10 ornaments left. Amen. Go to hhww.square and also to select an ornament or you can make a financial contribution through RAM or through Givelify. Just please mark that this is for the E-Tree. Let us be a blessing, amen, to those children or that child, amen, that may have to go without Christmas. And so it's going to be our job to be a blessing to them, amen. God bless you. At this time, let us now prepare for our communion at this time, amen. Father God, we thank you now for what we're about to partake and the partakers as well. Lord, you say as often as we do this, do this in remembrance of you. I pray now, God, now you bless these, your people. Lord, we do not take lightly, oh God, and we do not take it in vain for what was done on the cross that we may live and have life more abundantly. And we give you glory and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. On that day, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, took the bread and broke it. Say, this is my body which has been broken for you. Take, eat ye all of it. Likewise, he took the cup, held it up, said, this is my blood, which has been shared for you for the remission of sins. Take, drink ye all of it. Amen. God bless.
bless you. Hopefully and prayerfully you was blessed today by this service and by this ministry. And we thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. Let me speak a word of peace and blessings over you. Our Father and God, we thank you so much now for our time of sharing. And Lord God, I speak peace and blessings over these, your people. Lord, we declare and decree, Lord, that this week and the remaining of this week, Lord God, should be a blessing, a prosperous one in you. God, we thank you now, Lord God, for the promotion, deliverance, and healings, God, that's going to take place in our lives. But Lord, we know that we're blessed and our family shall be blessed. So Lord God, we're going to walk in the victory, the peace, and the joy that you have given unto us. God, we're so excited that you're going to continue to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ever ask or think. This is now is our prayer. Lord God, be with us and keep us. Now may the grace of God and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest room to abide with each and every one of you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Go in peace. God bless you.